A company called the Consulting Association was formed by 44 major construction companies as a secret organisation to gather information about workers who they considered to be troublesome on their construction sites. Trouble to them usually meant that they were union reps or health and safety representatives or even people who were questioning the way jobs were done on sites. And so they started gathering a secret database of information about people and then when they applied for new jobs or new contracts in the future they were blacklisted from work and many of them didn't work again for decades. And we've got five to six hundred claims here and of course there's many people out there who still don't know they were blacklisted. Not only was there a conspiracy charge here and invasion of privacy but there also looked like there were very strong defamation cases for damages to people's reputation. first um, blacklisted when I was 28 by the Economic League and from then onwards I went, had, always had trouble uh, getting a job. I'm Richard, I was on JLE, uh, Jubilee and Accidents in Drayton Skull, 98 to 99. All 600 of us was blacklisted. Afterwards, found it impossible to get any work. I got to start on the Ch Channel Tunnel Rail Link five, six times. Friday afternoon, phone call, Richard, sorry, it fell through. I was originally blacklisted by Taylor Woodrose for just taking part in a strike. Uh, they, when I saw my blacklist uh, info card, they said I was an instigator. I was, wasn't a steward, I just supported the strike and, and my friends who I work with. People just want a representative to go in there and that's all they're asking for, someone to represent them and put their point of view. Yeah, that's right. I mean, loads of jobs where we've tried to get a, a shop, we've, we've told you know, that we went half hour for a union meeting and sometimes within an hour you're gone, gone off the job. And all we was doing was asking and fighting and arguing for uh, decent conditions the conditions that other industries uh, take for granted. I was blacklisted at the age of 24. I was a crane driver. I was a safety rep and shop steward there for close to three years. We never had a strike on site. We never had a stoppage of work on site. I didn't find out till just a short while ago that I was blacklisted. And then we've got to put a stop to it. That's the thing that we really want to do. Because ever since I've been in the game as a young lad, we knew it went on, but we've never been able to stop it. In the construction industry, health and safety is such an important, such an important thing to us. And um, a lot of the, a lot of the improvements that have been won have been won by the likes of the men here that have effectively been given life sentences without any sort of trial. Put yourself in my position. You're 24, and, and your whole career's ended. Every time I applied for work, I was asked for my insurance number. I gave my insurance number. I gave what I worked for previously. I was promised I'd be contacted within a week and these contacts never came. And despite many phone calls and many attempts to get work, I never gained the employment. I ended up making fence posts for um, a pittance of the pay I was used to after a long spell of unemployment. I've never drove a crane since and uh, I don't think I'll ever drive a crane again for the rest of my working life. I was a young man then, back in the uh, early 80s, late 70s. I had a wife and children. Consequently, that all broke up, and I was forced out of the industry. It's cost me my ass in the long run, my marriage. I've never been unemployed before. To, to actually have, walk into a job centre for the first time was, was soul destroying, really, especially when you're an able bodied person. It was just, I don't know, it was the lowest ever of my life. We were always good sports, always. Yeah. And um, every time you went on a committee, a union committee job, um, that was your lot, you know. Once you left that job, had a terrible time yeah. finding work. The only way we used to find work was like with friends, mates, and sometimes agencies. I'd spent 10 years trying to get jobs of being forced into working illegally, in fact. Um, I, I, one subcontractor, uh, I, I started work on the Monday, and they said to me, um, you've been signing on? I said, yes. They said, right, we'll, we'll give you Tuesday mornings to sign on. And they would paid me half the wages. Compensation schemes just a PR stunt. Um, they're offering very, very small amounts of money to people. If you go into the scheme, you have to give up all your legal rights. Run them up. And they said, I got to the first line of my profile, and I said, Oh, that's it, stop there. You're definitely going to get 20 grand. All right? Obviously, they want people like me to take their money and not go down the I Corp line. So it's them, because what they've done, 20 grand. 
should Sam out what they put through. There should be a full public inquiry. We need to know how far this went into the upper echelons of the establishment and we know that certain individuals were involved and um, certain donors to certain parties. I think it's time that all this was brought out and we've done some work in Parliament. We had a, a full debate on this but there's a lot more that we all need to do. I think the undercover policing aspect of it as well really needs looking into. How far did that collusion go into the relationship between certain Tory donors, uh, certain undercover police officers and certain other politicians? I'd like to see and make sure that this would never be allowed to happen. It makes it illegal and, and the law would be enforced against companies that did carry out blacklisting. I'd like to see realistic compensation, retraining for those who want it, jobs for blacklisted workers and, and, and jail sentences for those who blacklist construction workers or people in any form of employment. I'd like to see the people who run in these companies, um, like the managing directors, uh, take the can for it, I go to prison. That, that's what it should be. Right, yeah. yeah, I do, yeah. That's right, that's the only way to stop it. If they can just, because they're, they're very rich, these people, and if they, they, they can just buy their way out, it's, that is not justice, is it? If, I mean, oh, we're, we're not, I'm in it for the money, it. I'm in it for the justice. If anything yeah. comes along, I'm good and wet, but my, my, my main aim is to stop it all for the, for the people in the future. Unite have um, been working on a sort of recruitment database whereby if companies want to take on construction workers, they can send the CVs without any names identifying who it is. So that's sort of an initiative to help combat um, combat blacklisting because there'll be no names to run through any databases. But one of the side effects of doing things in the right way, doing them in a fair way, is it actually helps other groups of workers as well. For example, women in industries. When I started in construction, I was a slinger signaller, a banksman working with the cranes. And I worked through an agency on all sorts of different sites, but I was often asked to be interviewed, and at that time people didn't really interview the banksman, you just took however many you needed on from an agency and that was the end of it, but because they saw I was a woman, I had to go through an extra step before getting the job. So when we start moving towards doing things more fairly, we actually benefit everybody. Blacklisting isn't the only time that a state has lived with big business against working people. We go back to the 1970s and we had the Shrewsbury pickets where Des Warren and Ricky Tomlinson were imprisoned for standing up for their rights for, for working people. We go back to the 80s, we had the miners where the miners and the police conspired against the National Union of Miners. We go further back and in Glasgow they sent in the tanks in George Square against the Clydeside workers who were standing up for their rights and over in Dublin they sent in the troops against Jim Larkin and the, and the transport and general workers. In Tullpuddle, when farm workers tried to get a union, they sent them to Australia. They deported them and sent them to Australia. And in Manchester, around the same time, there was a mass demonstration demanding better wages for working people. And they sent in the cavalry and 19 people were murdered that day by the British state. It was known as the Peterloo Massacre. And we have to say that the state and big business can fight against us all they like. They can assault us, they can blacklist us, they can victimise us, but we're going to keep coming back until we get justice. A better man than me wrote something to try and inspire people after what happened to Peterloo. His name was Percy Shelley. And he said, Rise like lions out of slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep has fallen on you. We are many, they are few. Thank you. Yeah.